From Caesars Palace in Las Vegas, Nevada, the triple hitter, two championship bouts, and a special elimination middleweight battle between Roberto Duran and Robbie Sims. Good evening, everyone. I'm Tim Ryan here at ringside in 100 degree temperatures in Las Vegas, Nevada. It's going to be a hot time in the young town tonight. Well, joining us on the commentary for what should be a most interesting evening of boxing is my CBS sports colleague, Gil Clancy. And Gil, a lot of anticipation awaiting the bout between McGuigan and Cruz first up here tonight. This heat has to be a factor. Does it favor either man? Well, Tim, first of all, Barry McGuigan is on the verge of superstardom. He's a very, very exciting fighter. He has two big things to worry about. Number one is Stevie Cruz. Stevie Cruz's record is 25-1. and one. He's a real solid fighter. And number two is his 110-degree heat. This could be a great leveler in this fight. I think everybody would agree that Barry McGuigan is the stronger physically of these two, perhaps the harder puncher. And yet, watching Stevie Cruz in workouts this week, it looks like he's in great shape, ready to go, and his style could be the perfect complement to the style of McGuigan. Uh, Tim, Barry McGuigan's not going to have to look for Stevie Cruz. Stevie Cruz is going to be right in front of him. He's a good combination puncher. I think both fighters are going to take a lot of punishment. It's going to depend on which fighter can take the punishment and which fighter can take the heat. Our first fight of the evening will be the WBA World Featherweight Championship between Barry McGuigan and Steve Cruz. Ladies and gentlemen, Top Rank Incorporated from Caesars Palace presents 15 rounds for the featherweight championship of the world. The referee for this bout is Richard Steele. In the blue corner, he's wearing the light green trunks and weighs an even 126 pounds. Born and raised in Fort Worth, Texas with a professional record, 25 and one, 13 knockouts, He's the number nine contender in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, the challenger, Stevie Cruz. And in the red corner, wearing the red trunks and weighing an even 126 pounds, a professional record of 29 victories, only one defeat, 24 by knockout, from Clonus, Ireland, the WBA featherweight champion of the world, the Clonus Cyclone, Barry McQuigan. Okay, I gave both fighters their instructions in the dressing room. I would like to caution you now. Obey my commands at all times. Is there any question? Shake hands and good luck. Well, here we go, Tim. Barry McWigan in red. Stevie Cruz in the green trunks. You know, just looking at them at this moment, they look like two movie stars cast for, for a Hollywood fight. Two handsome young men. And despite the fact that they're the same weight, Tim, Barry looks much, much bigger and stronger in the upper body. Well, we know to expect that big left hook of his to the body. That's his favorite and most effective punch. We also know Stevie Cruz has a very short, sharp, well-thrown right hand. So those two punches will be coming together, no doubt. Scheduled for 15, scoring on the 10-point must system. Judges are Angel Kovar, Venezuela, Gijutra of Canada, Medardo Villalobos from Panama. Well, as you can see, Tim, neither fighter is what you would call a cute fighter. They're in front of each other. They're going to be exchanging some pretty good punches. That left hook to the body by McGuigan, and he was warned by Richard Steele for a low blow. Now following up on that notion, his manager Barney Eastwood complained about how high Cruz has been wearing his protector in recent bouts. They wanted to have as much of that rib cage and waist exposed to that left hook of McGuigan as possible. Well, Tim, a lot of people don't know the rule. The trunks are supposed to be right at the navel. 
minute remaining in round number one scheduled for 15 in 110 degree temperature in the desert of Nevada. There's that left hook again, Tim. That's the, that's the shot to watch for. Good shot. Good shot, Switch it. Good combination landed by Cruz inside. And a right that backs up McWiggin. Under 30 seconds to go round one. I'm looking for Cruz to hit Barry with a good straight right hand over that jab, Tim. He only let it go once, and it didn't do much damage. He fell a little bit short. We know he can throw it well. At the end of round number one. Round number two. McWiggin in red, Cruz in green. McGuigan is a very industrious fighter. He cuts off the ring. He keeps you in front of him all the time. Even in sparring, uh, he, he just never lets up. He's busy, busy all the time. His last outing, he had a difficult time against Danilo Cabrera, stopping him in the 14th round after Cabrera had been a substitute for the scheduled contender. Again, good combination by Cruz. He's a good short combination puncher, Tim. <laughs> Lands an overhand right and then a straight left. Cruz also a substitute for Fernando Sosa of Argentina. Came up with detached retinas in both eyes and had to pull out of this fight on his face. And there's McGuigan battering to the body. Cruz able to take some of those on the arms, but two of them landing cleanly to the body. And, and Cruz counted well with the left hook. With Cruz, you can't stop to admire your work. When you finish throwing a combination, you better get out of there because he's going to hit you back. Warning to McGuigan for holding behind the head of Stevie Cruz. And we haven't heard the Irish, but here we go, barriers yet. It's very unusual. Well, it may have been that some of them thought he was just going to come out and roll through Stevie Cruz, and they're waiting to see what develops here. But Cruz uh, showing he's... A worthy opponent, to say the least. Good right hand lead by Cruz Landon. Over that left hand. And there it is again, Tim. He's going to keep trying to throw that right hand overtime. Solid jabs by McGuigan now scoring. And two back from Cruz. Under a minute to go round two. Four back from Cruz. Tim, two plus two is four. In fighting by McGuigan, solid left of the body that backed up Cruz. Two good jabs, they both landed. Both. Well, we expected this kind of fight, then. This is what's happening. Both fighters dealing out punishment and taking punishment. Good combination by Cruz, left hook, right hand. Under the 30 second mark, we go. McGuigan was a heavy favorite here in Las Vegas. And Insiders, including ourselves, who knew that uh, those odds didn't make any sense at all. Cruz is well-established, accomplished by the way. Barry seems a little flat to me, Tim. He's not winging. Missed badly with a right hand there as Cruz ducked under. Final seconds, round two. He's, he's trying to outbox Stevie Cruz, which I don't think is the right way to go. While he's strong, while he has full strength, and he has an effect on him. He should be out there banging, trying to get this guy out of there. Sounds right to me, Gil. That's a good point to make because this heat, as we keep saying, has to be a factor no matter how well they're trained for this bout. This is round three. And right now, he's fighting a tactical fight against a good tactician. Cruz well-trained by Joe Barrientos, Eddie Shaw, the trainer of Gary McGuigan. Good right hand by Cruz at Rock McGuigan. That's the punch we were watching in the gym, and he throws it quickly and straight. Tim, you know, there's an old saying in boxing that a good left hook can beat a right hand because your, your left hand is closer to the fighter. But McGuigan is not using his good hook, and that is his best punch. Two good jabs by Cruz. Cruz looking very relaxed. There's that 
hard left hook of the body from McGuigan and then a left hook to the chin. But if you noticed him, Cruz punched right back. Good right hand by Cruz. McGuigan is jabbing across his body. Good right hand by McGuigan. Good punch. That got Cruz's attention. That was the first punch that really hurt Cruz. He's in trouble. Combination by the champion. Cruz battled back. And did he battle back? Good right hand by Cruz. Left hook by the champion. Cruz backing into the ropes for the first time. A minute to go in round number three. McWiggin with a right hand. He hurt Cruz again. Cruz back in the ropes, trying to hold on. That's what he has to do, Tim. He has to use his strength. He has to rough up Cruz. Short right hand by the champion. Wigan appearing to come alive here once he saw that that punch had the effect on Cruz earlier in this round. Under 30 seconds to go. Cruz trying to fight from the ropes now. And Wigan with a combination. Tim, he's not throwing his best punch, that left hook to the body. There's a good left hook on the chin by McGuigan. Now McGuigan throwing it onto the body, a right and a left. And another right. Cruz is hurt, Tim. He's in trouble. Some blood now from the lip of Cruz. And we're into round number four. And Tim, Cruz has a worried look on his face. It looks like he's lost a lot of his confidence. He's going to have to nail Barry with a good punch. Let him get his confidence back. Tim Ryan and Gil Clancy bringing you this action from Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. Top ranks triple hitter. This is the first of three. Cruz definitely now looking to throw from the outside, Gil, to not, not willing to, to walk in as he did in the first two rounds. The champion got his attention in round three. Yes, he did, Tim. Giving McGuigan a lot of respect now. That takes his own rhythm away from him. Good right hand by Cruz. Perfectly timed. McGuigan digging the left of the body. Cruz threw the right over. Jabbing now by both fighters. Good left hook inside, landed by Cruz. Right hand lead by McGuigan, and they both bang away. But again, McGuigan hit him with that good left hook to the body, Tim. Takes a lot out of you, especially in his heat. Combination finished with a left of the ear. Cruz standing there, but not punching back now, just trying to protect himself. McGuigan right back to the fray with Cruz not moving off the ropes. Low punch by McGuigan, but the referee was not in a position to see. Cruz in the McGuigan corner. McGuigan trying to lean on him and work inside a short right hand of the jaw. McGuigan, combination landing. Short punches by McGuigan. Beautiful combinations. And Cruz is coming back. Three left hooks. Under a minute to go. Cruz trying to fight his way out of there. McGuigan won't let him out. A hard left hook lands to the face of the challenger, Cruz. And they just bang heads, Tim. McGuigan's doing a pretty good job with those elbows in there, too. Well, we've seen that before. He's got a talent for that. We saw it, we saw it against Juan Laporte in our CBS fight from Ireland and Belfast. Now Cruz lands a combination, but McQuiggan using the strength and muscle and a tiring Cruz resting on the ropes. Just missed with a straight right hand to the champion. Cruz is going to have to tie him up and walk out of there, Tim. Cruz is still looking to nail him with that right hand, but it's obvious. You can see the punch coming. Final seconds of round number four. Big round for the champion as he just had relentless pressure. Hart right to the body oh. at the bell and one after the bell. And Victor Steele separates them. A warning for McGuigan. Okay? When the bell rings, you break. 
Round number five, Wigan in red, Cruz in the green. Don't be confused if you're looking for the Irish fighter to be dressed in green. It's McGuigan, the champion in red. Well, apparently they've told Cruz to move. move on, use his legs, move, but that's not Stevie's style. His style is to stay there and throw those combination punches. He's lost only once. His first round knockout at the hands of Lenny Valdez. Otherwise, a victor in his 25 other pro fights. And a great amateur, Tim. He's a good, solid fighter. 250 wins, 20 losses as an amateur, the 79 Junior Olympic champion. Two good jabs, but McGuigan picked off the right behind him. Right hand lead landed to the ear of Cruz from the champion McGuigan. Wigan is able to nail him with long punches, Tim. But that can be dangerous. Cruz punches inside. He's really going to nail Barry. And he's, he's looking to do it. Cruz is. He's looking to unload that right hand. Good combination by the champion. Right hand landing to the chin. But Tim, as we say in the gym, he threw a one-two, but where was the hook behind it? Now Cruz jumps in with a combination that scored. Two good, solid jabs by the champion. Cruz doesn't seem to have any power in his punches now, Tim. Throwing combinations, not too much snap on the punches. McGuigan with a combination to the head, his corner wanting them to go right down to the body behind him. Good jab by Cruz. Under a minute to go, round number five. Cruz's legs still look good, Tim. Yes, they do. In fact, I think he looks a little fresher this round. At least he hasn't been resting on the ropes. There's another one of those long punches that McGuigan is able to land. Digging those hard left hooks to the body and a warning to keep them up. There's no power in Cruz's punches at all, Tim. McGuigan now forcing him over to the ropes. <laughs> Consistent pressure by the champion. The occasional counter-punching sortie by Stevie Cruz. With the edge definitely to McGuigan as we end the round of end, uh, round number five. Big right hand by the champion McGuigan at the bell. That's Barney Eastwood asking for the shot to the body after the land of the head. Barney Eastwood, the manager of Barry McGuigan. Of course, managers have the rights to be trainers too uh, whenever they choose to, especially during the course of the fight. That's <laughs> right, Tim. You're talking to the right guy. <laughs> anyhow, Tim, uh, Steve Cruz got off his uh, stool with a lot more purpose this round than he did the round before. The round before seemed to have lost his confidence, but this time he bounced out there. Whether it means anything or not, who knows? But he's, it looks a lot more alive right now. Now, Dave Gorman at the press conference said uh, Stevie Cruz will not put on the stool like Bernard Taylor did. That might be a little unfair to Bernard Taylor, who was beaten by McGuigan in the oven of Belfast. Cruz is landing a lot of good short little punches now, yes, Tim, he especially is. with the left hand. This is his best action of the fight. Cruz picking it up here and scoring. He just looked a, a lot more alive when he got off the stool, but those shots by Barry may take some of the life out of him. Two well-conditioned, classy boxer punchers in this featherweight championship. Two fine young guys. Tim, I'm amazed that neither fighter has really shown a sign of, of extreme fatigue as yet in this heat. Remarkable performance by both men. If you've joined us along the way, it's now 20 to 7 in Las Vegas. At 6.15, the start of this bout, it was 110 degrees in the ring. The sun is just starting now to sink behind us. Two good jabs by Cruz, and that they backed up McGuigan. Well, a fighter like McGuigan, that's the secret. If you can back up on McGuigan, you can lick him. But who can back him up? Good combination scored by McGuigan. A good fighter like Stevie Cruz should not be getting hit with those long right hands, Tim. He's got that left hand a little too low. 
that punishment to the body, I think, is one reason that pulls those hands down. You take so many poundings on your ribs and those vicious hooks from the boogie. Under a minute to go, round six. Right hand scored by the champion. And a low left hand by McGuigan. That brought Cruz alive. Richie Steele missed the punch again, Tim, but it was definitely a low blow. He's backing McGuigan up. McGuigan with the heat, maybe getting to McGuigan. Good right hand by Cruz. Under 30 seconds to go, round six. Good jab by the challenger. Big right, right hand. hand. And another right hand by Cruz. Toe to toe in the center of the ring. McGuigan showed he could take a punch against Juan Laporte, and it's going to serve him well there because he was just rocked there by Cruz. Clancy's giving the round to Stevie Cruz. Absolutely. He, he had McGuigan in trouble, and it wasn't for one punch, Then, Matter of fact, Dave Gorman told Steve Cruz, if you had him out on his feet, when you have a guy out, finish him. Two more right hands by Cruz. Cruz. Well, we, we knew that Barry was vulnerable for that right hand. Again, Tim, as, as we said, it's going to be a war of attrition. Who can take the most punishment? Now they've both taken it. And a good left hook by Cruz. We're in the seventh round, scheduled for 15. Neither fighter so far showing the effects of the heat. I think Barry slowed down significantly last round, Tim. Backing up, now he's moving away from Cruz. As we said, sometimes when this heat gets you, you go all of a sudden. And that's what it looks like happening right now. Cruz, a combination. Push the champion back into the ropes. Cruz, another combination score. Good right hand by McGuigan. Tim and another Harris. right hand and a left by the challenger. And another combination. Cruz with just steady pressure. Backing up McGuigan, a short right hand lands. Tim, McGuigan seems to have lost a little snap because he's hitting Cruz on the chin and Cruz is able to count the back. He's not moving him with the punches. Combination inside by Cruz scores. Wigan looking a little uncertain, a little confused here in the seventh round. Tim, he's lost a lot of snaps. A Missed a snap. wild right. Well, it's not often that you see McGuigan backing up and trying to box. That's what he's doing now, and that's not his style. Absolutely right. Joe Clancy with Tim Ryan. This is the WBA Featherweight Championship. Second title defense, third title defense by Barry McGuigan. Again, Cruz out punches McGuigan in a flurry. His corner asking him to jab and move. That's a, really what he's been doing. With that Another low now blow by McGuigan. This is the fourth time. Richard Steele with a warning for McGuigan, and I would think uh, he was in danger of losing some points if he gets warned again. Under 30 seconds to go, round seven. Now McGuigan lands a solid right hand, bringing it up from underneath. And a left of the body, but Cruz counters back. Tim, and another right hand by Cruz. Because McGuigan is not moving Cruz when he hits him. That's why Cruz can count the back. Slight cut over the left eye of the champion, McGuigan. Right on the eyebrow. At the bell, he lands a right hand. Now, everybody's giving him different instructions. He has his trainer giving him instructions. He has, he has a Panamanian working with him, who I'm sure never has worked with him before. He's also giving him instructions. That sure can't confuse a fighter. That's Laszlo Frutos, the Panamanian, and... They met while they were training in Palm Springs, the Duran camp. Frutos will be in Duran's corner as well. So it's added another voice into the McGuigan corner. Good right hand by Barry McGuigan, but again, Cruz punches back. We're in round number eight. And a left hook landed by the champion. He's not moving Cruz the way he was in the early part of the fight. Cruz with a very determined look on his face. In round number three, he was rocked and appeared to lose a little confidence, but boy, as he picked it up. 
then we actually we actually saw the difference when he came out of the corner. Good short punches by McGuigan. That finally backs up Cruz. Good short punches. The better advice certainly would be for him to do what he does best, and that's crowd and punch and stay busy inside, but his manager Eastwood has been asking him to jab and move. Well, Tim, you know, again, as you say, he's a manager and he's not a trainer, but you have three people giving him advice. It's kind of tough to listen to three people. Right hand lead landed by the champion and then left to the body. Well, that's another McGuigan. right hand. That's McGuigan when he stays in him and bangs. Left hand backs up Cruz. Landed right on his mouth. Oh. A big right hand. That wobbled with Cruz. That's McGuigan's best punch since round three. But Tim, it's got to be kind of discouraging. I mean, he hit Cruz right on the button. And really, he hurt him, but he ne never went down, never wobbled. Under a minute to go in round eight. I think he was affected by that punch, Gil. His legs look a little shaky to me. Tim, he was affected, but again... He really didn't wobble around the ring. He's still on his feet, I grant you, but he hasn't been punching with any effectiveness since that right hand. Maybe just gathering himself. And this may be, may be one of these fights where each guy gets, takes a turn winning rounds. Whoever works hard one round, he's tired the next round. Right now, it's McWiggan pouring on the heat. Cruz back against the ropes, and McWiggan pounding away to the body. Well, now he's fighting like McGuigan. He's not trying to box and be slick. Right hand lead under the chin of Cruz and another low blow. Left, oh, big right hand by Cruz. Perfect shot from the ropes. Lying in wait, let the right hand fly. There's the bell ending round number eight. Round number nine. So far, the slight cut over the left eye of McGuigan has not been a problem. Should it start to bleed, it could impair his vision. Yes, then because it's in a very, very bad spot right under the eyebrow, but it's only a pinhole right now. Round number nine, Cruz and Green, McGuigan and Red, Tim Ryan and Gil Clancy, and this has been an exciting, well-fought featherweight championship bout. Richard Steele, the referee. Good counter punch by Cruz, caught McGuigan leaning. Then we noticed that when Cruz worked in the gym, that was his best punch, that sneak right in. And he certainly has used it well in this fight. There he tried it again. He throws it short and straight, starts it right from the shoulder like Joe Willie Namath used to throw football. He doesn't telegraph it at all. He will often sometimes, though, however, stand back and kind of line it up, and you can see he wants to throw it. He's better when he's inside. Well, the fact that he's nailed Barry with this punch four or five times has slowed up McGuigan's pressure a little bit. He's a little tentative now, Tim, yeah. where before he was really winging. There's that looping right hand again from left field. Well, there's, there's McGuigan slipping punches, but not punching. And we always said when you make a guy miss, you have to count. Another one long. And another warning from Steele. No points taken away from the champion so far. Well, that is unusual, you know. Oh, it's a low blow back from Cruz. Well, he certainly owed him several. And he gets a warning from Steele. Well, Tim, Steve, Stevie Cruz time. is one of the fighters from the old school, Tim. What you do to me, I'll do to you. Yeah, nobody can blame him for that retaliation. He's taken several from the champion, McGuigan. He's not as good in, ge in geography as Barry, though, because his went way south of the board. Short left landed by Cruz, under a minute to go in round nine. Perhaps at the end of this round, we can go to the McGuigan corner and uh, see if uh, they've sorted out their instructions to the champion. McGuigan is not punching with any authority at this time, Tim. He may get it back, but there's really not too much snap. I guess it holds for both fighters. Under 30 seconds to go. Well, that heat finally might start to take its toll, as one would expect it would through nine, ten rounds. Tim, I... McGuigan gets a little more, but a short counter right by Cruz backs him up. Same right here. Good right hand by McGuigan. Good solid right hand. Let's go. Let's go, 
At the bell. Well, Barney Eastwood, I think, uh, just talks louder than trainer Eddie Shaw. They were both talking the whole time, but the manager had the louder voice. How much of it was taken in by Barry McGuigan? We'll see in round 10. McGuigan in red, Cruz in green, Tim Ryan and Gil Clancy ringside at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. Well, they said that he'll either take Cruz out this round or next round. He said he's going. Cruz looks fairly well composed to me at this time, Tim. Yes, he does. And at a good left of the body catching before he's coming in. It seems that McGuigan's jab bothers Cruz on the kick. He can hit with a good jab and take three, four steps backward. Yeah, I think that one landed right on the nose uh, where you picked that up, Gil. Stung him. Now Cruz backing up. Every time he backs up, he's still looking to counterpunch, though, hoping to lure McGuigan in and let that right fly. That's right. Always looking to nail him with the right. That's why McGuigan is a little tentative. Good digs to the body by McGuigan. Combination back from Cruz and another one. Four scoring punches from the challenger. Seems like McGuigan has gotten a little bit of a second win, Tim. Into the 10th round, scheduled for 15 and good short degree right temperatures. Right hand landed by the champion. McGuigan was too low blows. In. Beautiful combination and two low blows by McGuigan. It seems to me every time he hits Cruz low, he wakes him up. McGuigan went down on a short counter right. He was hit, a sneaky punch that Stevie Cruz punched. McGuigan was throwing, and it was it was Cruz was. Short counter right. Let's see how badly he was bothered by that. Tim, I, I don't think he was hurt that badly. It seemed to me that his legs were tangled up. And he, he, he signified to his corner that he was okay. It was a it was a punch that sent on the canvas, however. Under the 32nd mark, we go in round 10. And he was having a real good round up until that punch landed. His legs still aren't too good, Tim. Cruz, however, not putting pressure on him. And his corner waving to him to come on. After McGuigan. Harry Entis and Gorman waving their fighter on. But Cruz either can't or feels that McGuigan isn't as hurt as they think he is. McGuigan had been applying all the pressure and then a short counter right sent him down. There's the bell ending round 10. There's Sandra McGuigan and she is very concerned about the fortunes of her husband here in his third title defense against Stevie Cruz. We're into round 11, scheduled for 15 under the WBA championship rules. Yes. As I was saying, it could be very, very significant during a point system that means at least a couple of points in Cruz's favor. Because most of these rounds have been fairly close. Cruz putting some pressure on. McGuigan throws him off the ropes. McGuigan's legs look a little shaky, Tim. Legs look a little shaky. Cruz fighting very patiently here, having scored that knockdown. He's got the champion on the move. And McGuigan cannot fight backing up, Tim. He can't fight boxing. He's going to have to revert and beat Barry McGuigan with his teeth. Back this kid up and try to get him out of there. He's not going to win it this way. It gives Cruz time to set the pace. There's the right hand again. Cruz can set his own pace, he can rest. Bad tactical error by McGuigan. Now there's a cut at the corner of the right eye of the champion, McGuigan. Cruz counter-punching very well. There's that right hand again. Even if it doesn't land, it makes Barry respect him. Cruz seems much the stronger of the two now, Tim. 
He looks like he's coming downhill, and Barry looks like he's backing downhill. Under a minute to go, round 11. Look at the way he moved McGuigan with that jab, Tim. In the McGuigan corner, a left hook landed by the champion. Good combination. Right hand lead to the chin, a combination by McGuigan rallying some. But Cruz battles back. Missed with the left hand. Under 30 seconds to go, round 11. Apologize for the loss of our clock on the screen. We're hoping to get that repaired for you. We'll keep you informed of the time. McGuigan is throwing arm punches now, Tim. Who's the challenger? has been in control here on the 11th round. Light cut at the corner of the right eye of McGuigan as the bell sounds ending round 11. But the one big effect of punch was the one that put McGuigan on the canvas. And we're into round number 12, Cruz in green, McGuigan in red. And who would have thought it, Tim? I couldn't believe these two kids could fight at this pace and be into the 12th round in this heat. 110 degrees when they began this fight. Temperature has probably dropped perhaps 10 degrees, a little more now that the sun has finally dropped behind the arena here in the desert of Las Vegas. Round number 12. Incredible performance by two well-conditioned athletes. Remember, Stevie Cruz took the fight after Fernando Sosa of Argentina was declared ineligible because of injuries to his eyes. But Cruz had been in the gym. He'd been preparing for a fight. He was ready to go. What an opportunity, and he knows full well you don't get them all that often. Ranked number nine in the world by the WBA. Again, we, we mentioned that the, the heat might affect one fighter more than it does the other. And I think up to this point, the heat has been a factor. And I think that it's bothered McGuigan more than it has Cruz. Well, McGuigan, uh, the Irishman, trained in Palm Springs for a month. Now a little blood from the mouth of McGuigan on that right-hand shot from Cruz. Right hand by the champion land. Nailing a nailing Cruz with a lot of effective punches now, Tim, but that's what he was doing in the round when he got nailed and put down. Now the chance for Barry McGuigan. Here we go, Barry, a right hand by the champion. That stunned Cruz. Yeah, Cruz now is starting to wear down a little bit, Tim. As we said, they take turns. McGuigan unwilling to, to move right in behind that, though, because of that good counterpunching. He got hurt with that left yes, hook, he Tim. he did. He's got a lot of respect for the counterpunching of Cruz. Got hurt with Cruz's left hook again. And a good combination by Cruz. Backing up the champion. And we, he, can't, he can't fight backing up. That's for sure. Under a minute to go, round 12. A good McGuigan. solid left jab by Cruz. McGuigan is a little wobbly right now, Tim. If he, if he gets hit a good punch, he's going down. McGuigan walking in, landed a left hook high on the cheekbone of the challenger. Cruz on the rope, another, another low blow. blow. There's a point taken away from McGuigan. He's had a lot of warnings. His partisan fans don't like it, but he's fortunate that it hasn't cost him more dearly. And boy, could that, could that be significant in a fight like this, Tim? Could that be significant? They banged heads. Good counter punching Look again. Two right hands by Cruz. Well, because McGuigan is winging his punches and Cruz is throwing short, snappy punches. That's the difference. Dave German says... He's in our country. He's ready to go. Go get him. This is round number 13. Who would have figured? 13 rounds. A grueling pace established by these two outstanding young boxers. McGuigan, the champion. A point taken away from him in a round that he may have been winning on the scorecards in round 12. Although Cruz did wobble him a couple of times. There's a solid left by the champion. That hurt Cruz. Yes, it did. Combination by McGuigan. Tim, you have to remember, he was also winning the round big when he got knocked down. That's right. So it has not been a fortunate fight so far for Barry McGuigan. There's Cruz trying to counter with that left hook again. 
McGuigan landing freely here now. Almost every punch is thrown in this round. But Tim, they're not the punches are not moving Cruz. And Cruz will hit him and, and he'll back up. He'll cut to the right corner of the, the right eye of Gary McGuigan, leading a little bit. Cruz. Now they Again. both landed. McGuigan had landed a combination. Cruz's punches was by far the more effective punch. It was straight and short. Left hook by McGuigan. All of McGuigan's punches are from way outside, and Cruz is landing the short, crisp punches. Another good right hand by Cruz. Tim, they're just trading shots now. What a fight. Big this combination is. by McGuigan. That's a first, weary. first time I've seen a fighter hold in this entire fight. First time. They both took a little rest, no wonder. Under a minute to go. Round number 13. Now, Steve. Champion pouring it on. Another right hand. Cruz stays there. Well, Tim, let's see. If, if McGuigan does the work this round, let's see what happens if we get into the next round. Another combination by McGuigan. And Cruz is taking a lot of punishment now. McGuigan pounding away. Cruz refusing to buckle. Cruz finally takes himself off the rope. Still calm, cool, and collected, Cruz. Pressuring Cruz again back to the rope. Using his strength, Tim. Warning for Cruz for holding as McGuigan ducked under him. He grabbed him. Cruz has not thrown many punches in the last 30 seconds. There's a bell ending round 13. Round number 14. Scheduled for 15. McGuigan in red. Cruz in green. What a terrific fight. And temperatures over 100 degrees. Well, Tim, again, Barry had three guys talking to him at the same time. And I think he's a little too far out now. He can get nailed reaching. The chant of the crowd. Here we go, Barry. But Cruz's punches again are the short of punches. And as soon as Cruz landed, the Texans start to apply. What McGuigan is doing it now, Tim, he's doing it with the work, work ethic. He's throwing two, three times more punches than Stevie Cruz. And there's two good jabs by Cruz. McGuigan has to apply that pressure. He can't back up. Anytime, anytime he backs up, he's in Steve Cruz territory. Cruz oh. ripping a left hook to the body. McGuigan landing. by the champion. Another low blow by Barry. Counter punch left by Cruz. McGuigan forcing Cruz into the Cruz corner. Now Steve trying to battle out of there. Lands a right hand. McGuigan is, McGuigan is busting him now, Tim. Using his elbows. And he got nailed by a good right hand by Cruz again. But he's really using his strength. He's mugging Cruz right now. Pushing him using that strength. There he is, pushing him back. McWagan staying right on Cruz. Cruz looking a little bit arm worried. McWagan, relentless attack. Well, he, he's using his muscle, Tim. That's what he's doing, strength and muscle. Cruz trying to counter punch on the ropes. What an all-out effort by both fighters. Most of the work being done by McGuigan. There's a right that lands. This Stevie Cruz takes some punch, then. There should not have been any doubts about his chin just because he was knocked out by Lenny Valdez in the first round, his only defeat. He had shown in many other fights he can take a shot. So to McGuigan landing a combination, Cruz won't go down. Under 30 seconds to go, round 14, believe it or not. Cruz is still calm, cool, and collected. He knows where he is. Concentration is good. Hands are up. But the champion has been the busier man the last couple of well, rounds. Well, he's, he's outstrengthening Stevie is what he's doing right now, Tim. 
coming down the home stretch, the championship distance in good style. McGregor trying to step in with that right behind the left. It fell short. End of round 14. A standing ovation greets these two great young featherweights for round 15. And deservedly so, Tim. One of the best performances I've ever seen. The pace of this fight has been tremendous. No clinches. Tremendous pace from beginning to end. Good right hand by Cruz to the ear of the champion. Well, Dave Gorman told him the fight's close. This may be the round you need. Again, by McGuigan. With counter punches by Cruz. McGuigan is slowing from a distance. He can get nailed. He has to get close to Stevie Cruz. He can't box. Cruz got him backing up. He's in right trouble. A right hand. McGuigan trying to hold on to stay up. His feet are rubber legs. Well, Tim, he worked very hard the 13th and 14th round. He may not have anything left. Trying to get his balance. His legs much farther apart than normal. Cruz hurt him with that right. What a fight. No legs under Barry McGuigan, Tim. He's going to have to do it with guts now. He doesn't know how to hold. He should hold, walk around a little bit. But that's not his nature. Hey, good right again. Tim, he's hurt. Cruz rips to the body behind that big right hand. McGuigan desperately trying to hang on. What a finish to this fight. Another right hand by Cruz. McGuigan desperate. Now he goes the right hand. A left hook and a right hand sending McGuigan down. He's on his feet, looking into his corner. I don't know that he has the count. You okay, Brad? He said he's all right. Got a little over a minute to go, Tim. What a finish to this fight. 15 tough rounds. The crowd on its feet. The champion throwing in desperation now. A left hook snaps his head back. Another left and a right behind it from Cruz. A minute to go in the fight. Tim, I think he, he punched himself out in the 14th round. That's what happened in this fight. Cruz backs off inexplicably. I don't think he isn't tired. They're both tired. But even still, he's got the champion wobbling around the ring. Foreman, his trainer, his manager, exhorting him to come after McGuigan. McGuigan goes down again. One more knockdown, and the fight is over. And he's going to have about 25 seconds to do it. Under the 30-second mark. McGuigan looking totally confused, looking at his corner, telling Richard Steele he's all right. 19 seconds, Tim. Three knocked. Now he grabs on to Stevie Cruz. Smart thing to do. Smart thing. Now to 13 seconds. His corner told him to do it. He didn't do it too well. Cruz shook him off. Final seconds. Final seconds of the fight. If he goes down, the fight's over. And the bell sounds. A wobbling champion with Steve Cruz scoring two knockdowns in the 15th round. Here is the official scoring for this WBA featherweight championship bout. Angel Tovar scores at 143-142. Judge Mirado Villalobos scores at 143-139. And Guy Yudras scores at 142-141 for the winner. From the great state of Texas, the new champion. Stevie Cruz!